Hello everyone, this is Ty Slatter with GTA Sports and welcome to another edition of GTA's ISO Mode. If you haven't already, make sure you follow GTA Sports Network and GTA Heat Check on all social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, GTA Sports, and don't forget GTASports.com for all things in the world of sports. Now today, we're talking about the Memphis Grizzlies. A team that's number one in the West as of this recording. 19-10 with... Roughly, the team is winning well into 700% of the games. Uh, when you got a well over 600 winning percentage, um, you know, you're 13 and 2 at home, 6 and 8 on the road, um, 8 and 2 in the last 10. The winning streak ended when they lost to the Thunder. I believe it was 115 to 109 when Ja Morant got ejected uh, after pretty much questioning an official's call and receiving double tech. How do I feel about the Grizzlies right now is really simple. John Morant has to stay healthy in order for this team to reach its full potential. We saw what they could do last year without him. Uh, and again, they, they took the Warriors to the brink of an elimination game. So it's not that the Memphis Grizzlies don't have the talent. But health is good. Like any other team in the NBA, health is going to be a determining factor on how far they actually make it. With Devin Bain out, with, I believe it's a toe injury for another three to four weeks. Uh, you still got Danny Green sitting on the bench as well uh, from the trade that they did in order to send Anthony Melton to the 76ers. So, I mean, you got players that are impact players that are not on the court right now. And to those players make it on the court, I have to say that their ceiling is limited on how far they actually can go. But the bright side. The average age on this team, if you take out Steven Adams, or even including Steven Adams, the average age is about 26. Brandon Clark's 26. Dylan Brooks is 26. Tyrus Jones is 26. Um, so it's a fairly young team if you take out Danny Green, who Danny, who Danny Green hadn't played a game from yet, so you can't really eat. Can, you can count them roster-wise, but not on active. And then you still have, of course, Steven Adams, who's 29. And uh, everybody else is pretty much under 26. So when your star player is 23, three years in the league, he's still on his rookie max extension. You can, I mean, sky's the limit as far as how far they can go. The Memphis Grizzlies and the New Orleans Pelicans are roughly the same team, in my opinion. Now, some, now Grizzly fans and Pelican fans may disagree with that. But when you look at the makeup of each roster, the New Orleans Pelicans as well as the Grizzlies have the same amount of veterans, roughly. You got two veterans that are still producing at a high level. You have a superstar in the making with Zion Williamson and John Morant. Um, you have every position is pretty much young, you know, maybe outside of the bigs with Valachunas and Steven Adams, you know, both being in their late 20s going to their 30s. So I look at the makeup of the rosters, they're basically the same team. Uh, I think the ultimate difference when it comes down to it is coach. So when you look at the difference between Willie Green and Taylor Jenkins, I mean, that's really the big difference between these teams. It's going to come down to play calling, playmaking, and health. Um, John Morant jumps out the gym. We all know what that leads to. Bad knees, ankle injuries, bad landing, you know, just... You know, playing with reckless abandonment, you know, leads to D Rose type situations. So you don't wish that on anybody, you know, and I'm hoping that he evolves his game enough to, you know, depend more so on his jump shot and less on his athleticism so he can have a long career and be an efficient scorer and possibly become a better shooter. But if he doesn't, that's okay. There's plenty of NBA players in the Hall of Fame that never developed a, a true jump shot. And were never known as true shooters. They were just great scorers. So uh, Russell Westbrook comes to mind. First ballot Hall of Famer, never got a true jump shot. But again, when it comes to Memphis, I've always been one to say on the podcast over at Heat Check with Antonio Turner that if the Memphis Grizzlies were in the East, they would have went to the finals last year because I believe they had enough talent to beat the Boston Celtics. They have enough death on their roster to put up a fight against the Milwaukee Bucks, the 76ers, pretty much every team that's at the top of the East, even right now. 
Cavaliers, Knicks, you name it. Um, but because they're in the West, un you know, unfortunately for them, you got to deal with the Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. You got to deal with Zion and the Pelicans when healthy. You got to deal with the LA Clippers when Kawhi and PG are not on the bench. Uh, you got to deal with Dane Time up in Portland with Jeremy Grant and Yusuf Nurkic and, and Simons. Like, you got these teams that may not be at the top of the list in the regular season, but they're always a threat come postseason when their stars are healthy. As you, as we all know, when it comes to Portland, Dame only missed the playoffs one time in his whole career because he was injured. Every year that he's not been injured, he made the playoffs. So when you have that type of resume that you're going up against when it comes to the Grizzlies, they're a young team on the come up. I don't know if Taylor Jenkins is going to be the coach to get them over the hump, and that may be something that the front office may have to take a look at in the upcoming seasons once John Morant gets off his rookie contract and it's time to get him to another max deal, and he might look elsewhere to win a championship. So that's something to look out for as well. But as of right now, the ceiling for the Grizzlies is the same roughly as I mentioned in my previous video about the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies were a John Morant knee injury away from arguably coming out of the West last year. And this is going up against Golden State. And they definitely would have took out the Mavericks. So, seeing what they did last year, and John Moran tweaked his knee at the worst time possible, I think the Grizzlies can get to the Western Conference Finals and maybe even the NBA Finals uh, this season, their ceiling is only reason their ceiling is slightly higher than the Pelicans is because Zion has never like really been available enough to put them in that conversation, which is why I say their ceiling is the Western Conference Finals. And they could easily prove me wrong, and I'd be you know beyond proud. And you know, if they prove me wrong as a Pel, you know, as, as somebody that likes what the Pelicans are building down there, I love the the, the culture that they're developing. Um, shout out to, you know, Dave Griffin for that and Willie Green. But um, the Grizzlies can get to the World Conference Final just as much and as efficiently as the Pelicans. If the opportunity presents itself, if everything falls into place and John Moran can learn how to stay healthy when it comes to his knees and lower extremities through the grueling 82 game season post All-Star break, I got the Grizzlies going head to head against Zion at some point in the postseason. These two teams that are at the top of the West right now are going to have to face each other at some point. And dare I say it, both teams could prove me right and both get to the Western Conference Finals and have to, one or the other, one has to win, one has to lose. It could be, it could come down to a Zion Williamson versus John Morant Western Conference Finals within the next two seasons. Mark my words, it's possible. If they stay healthy, we could very well see the rivalry of two best friends having to go against each other to eliminate one or the other to get to the finals. Zion, John Morant. Both teams are built pretty much the same. It's going to come down to coaching and the best ability being availability when it comes to John Morant and Zion Williamson. This has been another episode of GTA's ISO Mode. You can follow me at Ty Slatter on all social media platforms. Don't forget to follow GTA Sports Network, GTA Heat Check on all social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, comment, and subscribe to GTA Sports. And don't forget GTA for all things in the world of sports. This is Ty Slatter, and until next time, take care.